TLDR Jigsawing Project. It has been asserted that there is no way to learn the complex material for the courses in this and other online graduate programs without reading peer-reviewed academic articles. I patently disagree with this assertion, both as a current student who finds great frustration in such readings and finds a great percentage of their volume to be filler, and a potential educator in an online environment who sees the great potential in using technology and alternative teaching methods to solve such obstacles to learning. I understand that my position as a student who does not want to read such materials may be difficult to relate to, so I would like to begin by asking the following question. What would be said to a visually impaired student who wanted to enroll in an online graduate program? I know that it may be difficult to feel sympathy for a student who won't do the readings, but what about a student who can't do the readings? As it stands, in any given course there will be a stack of various academic journals and other difficult reading passages. These are all expected to be read in their entirety by each student, then commented upon by each student. From my personal experience, one of the first semester course's readings were thicker than a phone book when printed. I know this because I questionably decided to go through two ink cartridges printing them. I received an A in this class, although I cannot remember anything in particular from these readings. I certainly cannot remember enough information to justify the volume of the reading. I propose the following idea for a lesson activity to be used as part of a greater plan to transition online graduate courses into a form where they can be more easily digested by those students who can't or won't read such papers. What if at the beginning of each course, each student were given just one difficult journal article to read, and then write an abridged version of the article? Students could reorganize the information for brevity and clarity creating a shorter, more readable article that was free from extraneous non-information. After the initial project was done, the new abridged articles could be peer-reviewed for completeness and accuracy. The instructor could then do a final review to make changes where necessary. The new abridged articles would then be available for the rest of the students to use as alternative for, to the denser readings. This could be the new method of doing each class's readings each semester. Or it could be done once, and then the abridged articles could be used for successive semesters of students. In one semester, each course could create an entire alternative library of readings for all future classes to benefit from. Future students such as myself could potentially learn the information without ever having to read a single academic article. This would be beneficial for at least four reasons. Number one. It would create an alternative way for students to gain the information, plain and simple. This should be enough of a reason for the project alone. Too many students find the old way undesirable to not give them an alternative method. Number two, it would give the students a sense of purpose while they were reading the articles. The difficult to read articles may have little or no relevance to the students' lives or career, and in the reading they may find it to be purely busy work. If they know that their reading of these articles may mean that another may not have to, it may give more motivation to finish the article and truly try to understand it. Also, if this project were to be done only once, it would create an immense sense of pride in knowing that they had done something to potentially help generations of future students. Number three, it would potentially cut down on the redundancy of information that plagues every online class I have been in and likely every online class in general. Often, when responses to articles are written, students will focus on trying to find what they thought was important and write about that. Almost always, what one student finds important is nearly identical to another, so reading the responses becomes very redundant. If the students were already clear on what the important information was, the class could skip this redundancy altogether and more quickly move on to deeper conversations about the subject matter. Number four, it would probably help the students learn better. Every single instructional design class I have taken has at some point mentioned the value of removing extraneous information from instructions. Finally, the shorter, more clear articles could be saved in a file format that would be easier to transcribe for visually impaired students. I'm sure that I'm not entirely aware of the technology available to visually impaired students. But I know it must be easier to create a listenable audio recording of a digital text file than a scanned PDF document. There are many acronyms that are popular on the internet currently, 
TLDR is relevant here. Too long, didn't read. A new, very different generation of students is going to be taking college and graduate courses soon. Most, if not all, of these students grew up on the internet and have come to rely on reading in a manner that would probably be scoffed at by many academics. Many of these students will also likely be interested in online courses because of their comfortability with the internet. It seems that unless a change is made, we are setting many of these students up for failure. My gut feeling is that this process of creating abridged versions of the articles should be the job of the online professor alone. In traditional college and graduate courses, the professor often does this anyway in the form of lectures. However, I propose this project for graduate students because I think it will be an all-around easier sell. Finally, I would like to add that while there is probably some value in reading difficult material just for the sake of doing it, unless you are an active member of academia, you cannot readily access journal articles. You cannot use EBSCOhost to find academic articles without academic credentials. So what then is the point of making such readings mandatory? The skill of reading them will never be used, they do not enjoy them, and there are potentially far better ways of disseminating the information.